This is a short video about the two Marais flute duets that I recently published an article on for the American Recorder magazine. Um, in this case, presenting them as recorder pieces. So they were originally written for the transverse flute and to play recorder uh, on those pieces, we normally transpose up a minor third so these uh, two pieces, uh, the first one is entitled Bouquet les Caracoleurs, uh, and the second one is a Musette. Uh, in this, this first duet, <clears throat> this was taken from uh, a manuscript that I have of flute pieces by Marais. He alternates in this manuscript between sets of pieces for flute and bass and duet pieces. And these duet pieces especially work nicely on recorders. One of the things we run into when we play flute music on the recorder is that if the flute music is using the upper register of the flute, which Murray does a little bit, uh, the tessitura gets pretty high on the recorder. Uh, so um, a high D on the flute, which we wouldn't think of as a particularly high note, uh, is a high F on the alto recorder, which is a pretty high note. So part of playing these pieces is uh, being able to use a good thumb technique and just being able to get a nice sweet sound when you're up high, um, not letting uh, it become forced and strained sounding. So that is a good thing to work on in these pieces. I think especially in this first duet, because there are some fairly long high Fs and uh, long high E flats as well. So one of the uh, performance issues that we deal with, uh, especially in this first duet, is the idea of inégal, and inégal is, or inégalité, is the practice of playing certain notes not in the rhythm that they're notated, but in an unequal rhythm. This is somewhat akin to playing in, um, in jazz music or even in uh, Celtic music, often uh, things that are notated straight are not played straight. So how do we know um, where to do that and exactly how to do it? Because obviously unequal can be anything from something that's very dotted to something that just has a slight um, lilt to it. In terms of how we know where to do it, it is usually applied to notes that we would think of as a medium note value in the piece. So in this first duet, it's very clear the medium note value is the eighth note. And eighth notes, I think we could say, are the most common notes that end up being played in a gall. As to how unequal the notes should be played, that's kind of a matter of taste. Uh, in my opinion, this piece sounds nice with quite a light inegal, and you'll hear in the recording that David Dyer and I made um, what I think of as a pretty light inegal. It's interesting when we sat down to record these, we had never played them before, and I think we both had the same idea about how the inegal should work, which is a nice thing. Oftentimes, it's difficult to get this very light feeling of Inigal. And one of the ways to, to try to learn to do this is to first play with a triplet rhythm. Or for the top line. And then uh, Ideally, I think it sounds nice if it is slightly less unequal than a triplet. It's very easy to play things either dotted, you could play, but I don't think that fits the character of this piece, so I wouldn't do that. But I might go and try to make it a little bit less 
unequal than a triplet. It's a little bit tricky, but if you practice playing it as a triplet and then try to play it less than a triplet, you, you might find the groove uh, that works nicely uh, for this piece. Moray uses very few ornaments uh, other than written out ornaments, so very few ornament signs. I think in the case of this duet, the only ornament sign is the plus which means always, in this case, a trill from the upper note. And uh, one of the characteristics of trills at this time is that if it's on a longer note, the trill starts slower and speeds up. And if it's on a very quick note, then it would just be a very quick trill, still from the upper note, but not spending any time on it. This particular movement, I think, only has trills on longer notes, usually dotted quarter notes. There are a few places that are a little tricky for ensemble. If you look at the music on the second page, starting at measure 36, there's this yum da dum When we get to measure 38, the two recorders have to do that together. And then in the next measure, the top recorder has a slightly more complicated version of the same thing. So fitting that all together is tricky. Uh, one also has to be careful at the beginning of the piece not to start faster than you're going to be able to play these last two lines. In the title, Les Caracoleurs is referring to a dance that was uh, performed by horses, and from what I understand about the dance, it involved the horses going in a straight line and then making a sudden circle. And I think if you uh, look at the themes of this, dee -da -dee -da 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 -dum -bum, it has this circular motion. It goes straight and then there's a little circle. So I think the piece is trying to imitate the motion of that dance, which is quite nice. The second piece is also by Moran Marais, and it is included in my manuscript, but in uh, the manuscript, it is a version for flute and bass. However, uh, Jacques Martin Oteterre, in his first book of brunettes, uh, includes this piece as a duet, and he recognizes that this was composed by Marais, and he is arranging it for two flutes, and which I have turned into a version for two recorders. Uh, a musette is a type of bagpipe that was very, very popular at the end of the 17th century and into the 18th century in France. It was known as kind of a chamber version of the bagpipe, so it's not a big loud instrument like we're used to hearing with Highland pipes. It's a very, it's a very intimate uh, sound. It's very sweet and just has a buzzy quality to it. <clears throat> the instruments can be quite fancy uh, and obviously people who played them well could do amazing things on the musette. So a lot of composers wrote pieces uh, that are not intended to be played on musette, although you certainly could, but are kind of imitating the sound of the musette. And so you can kind of imagine, uh, especially as you're playing this beginning part, that there's a drone going on uh, underneath as there would be normally on the musette. The other thing is that the musette can't be articulated with a tongue the way the recorder can. And so musette pieces are generally written in a very smooth way. And so, uh, our, our approach to this is to try to keep things very smooth. I think uh, Inigal is not uh, really an issue here. The rhythm is pretty much the way it is. Now, Odeter does use more different ornament signs than Marais. Uh, in Marais' version of this that I have, uh, I believe he only uses the plus sign again. But here, Auditeur, who had earlier published a chart with 
14, 13 or 14 different ornament signs and explaining what they all do uses a number of them here. In the first full measure, you see a little, little mark, uh, which I call a dagger, above the first note. And that is uh, what Auditeur would call a battement, or which we might know as a mordant. So, that's how that works. And the plus sign is just, uh, in this case, a fairly short trill, so not a lot of length on the upper note, but still starting on the upper note. And he has one other ornament that he only uses one time. That is in measure 12 in the first part on the first note, that V. And that is an appoggiatura from below. So if I play from bar 11, would be how you play that. Uh, and like the first duet, one has to be a little careful about the tempo. It's very easy to play these first, uh, for this first phrase at any tempo you want, but as you see when we get down here to measure 27, all of a sudden we have to be able to go rather quickly. And um, some of those uh, are difficult in terms of ensemble, just trying to get everything lined up well. Uh, but I think it's a, it's a terrific piece. I should mention that uh, this piece, uh, the real origin of this piece is as a vile piece. So Marais wrote it first as a vile piece, and it obviously was a very popular piece because it appears in a lot of different sources arranged um, in different ways. So I hope you enjoy these pieces. I think they're, they're fun to play. They're in a very beautiful French style and learning to make the ornaments fit in well and to have the rhythm uh, and sound be uh, very beautiful, uh, I think is a, is a good objective. So I hope you enjoy them.